welcome to jasonnewland.com. I'm here with my boy Andre. And he's giving his daddy lots of kisses, aren't you? Yeah. So this is your daily hypnotic buffet. And it's the fourth one so far. So it's the fourth of... Um, is it the 4th? Yeah, it's the 4th of January 2018. So, hello Jackie, or Jack, Jack who? Jack, Jack. Um, so there's people coming and going. I'm recording this live. Um, sometimes I record them live. Sometimes I will just um, make a video and upload it to YouTube and share it on Facebook. Other times I will record it as an audio and then put it into a video. So yeah, it just depends. Uh, I don't know if you can notice, those of you who have heard me before, I'm sounding a bit croaky. Just, oh come on, just stay with me Andre, come on. Isn't he the most beautiful boy? I know those of you that are listening to this on iTunes or SoundCloud, you can't see you can't see him, but I do recommend you watch the or at least click on the video. If you're watching this on SoundCloud or iTunes, go to my website or my YouTube or fi Facebook page just to look at the video because you see how cute he is. He is <laughs> aren't you the most cutie? He's so beautiful. Absolutely changed my life having him. He's uh, opened my heart to loving. In a, in a, never really, really understood. I understood the concept, but I really didn't understand the idea of unconditional love. Because there's a whole thing of people saying, well, I love my child unconditionally. But if that child, as an adult, let's say, the child was an adult, and they kept, and they were being abusive to you, or being really horrible to you, and hitting you and stuff, there's got, there comes a time when, um, maybe you still love them, but you have to kind of emit them from your life. Um, so I kind of used to get a little bit conflicted with that idea. But this little boy, he does bite me sometimes, but I've got this uh, unconditional love for him. Even though he poos on the carpet sometimes and he bites me when I'm asleep sometimes. Not badly, but just um, I wake up sometimes and he'll be nibbling on my lip. Just gently to try and wake me up because he wants my attention. Don't you? Yeah? Because he wants to play. Because he'll sleep during the day and during the night, and then he'll wake up during the day and during the night. And he'll want to play, he'll want me to chase him around the flat, he'll want to get onto the table and push stuff off, and you know, do all kinds of things. And sometimes he just wants a cuddle, other times he just wants to wrestle. He's, he's not always wiggly. But a lot, most of the time, he's, he's like, look, say hello, say goodbye then. Can you see yourself? Look. Hey, look. Hello. Right, you go and he might need to go to the toilet. Nope, he doesn't. Yes, he does. He's now going to the toilet. So, see, it's not fair for me to hold on to him if he needs to do a wee-wee or a poo. So, anyway, so this, today has been a weird, weird day for me. I woke up, I went to bed about half three in the morning. I was out in the evening, I went to um, meditation class, and when I got home, I made a video, or I made an audio which turned into a video. And because I'd been out, I don't get out very much, uh, I haven't been recently, because I got out, 
and I was around people and I saw people that I hadn't seen for quite a while, people that are friends, people that I've known for quite a long time. And we got talking and I was possibly a little bit overstimulated so I couldn't just come home and go to bed. So I was awake until yeah, quite early hours of the morning. Went to bed, I felt fine, I felt actually good. Tired, but I felt good. I felt very hot though which was a bit unusual at that time of night. I uh, had to have the covers off me. Anyway, I woke up at 6.30 in the morning, so three hours later, and I was choking, and I was struggling to breathe and uh, without going into being gross or anything. I thought it was phlegm. I thought it was just a bit of mucus or whatever on my chest or in my throat. So I went to try and clear that out while going to the bathroom. And do you know that the floppy bit in your throat, not the tonsils, but the one in the middle. That was freezing. It was getting stuck, sticking in a weird direction, and it was very long and big. It was very um, swollen. And I was struggling to breathe. And it sent me into what I can only describe as uh, a feeling of terror real fear, real terror, because I really thought, oh, not being able to breathe is, it's got to be among the worst things in the world, you know, because it's just generally for anyone, because you need to breathe and to not be able to. Um, and I really got scared. I ran downstairs, knocked on my neighbor's door, who's my friend, to see, it's like, I had to go to the hospital there was no doctors open, there's nowhere to go at that time. Couldn't call an ambulance or something like that, so I had to get to hospital. I didn't have enough money to get to hospital because I needed to get a taxi. So I had to phone up and wake up someone else, another friend, to put money into my account so I could afford to get a taxi to the hospital. So it was a real um, weird start to the day. And they were really great. It's, it's, I've now got this feeling of uh, gratitude within me for those having friends that are there, that are there and will help. I know there's more, there's other people as well, but um, I wasn't going to just phone everyone up. I just, I just wanted to phone someone that could do it there and then and um, help me to get where I needed to go. I felt guilty about going to the hospital because it wasn't just because of what it was it's like well it's just a throat thing but I was struggling to breathe and I was also going into panic and I wasn't sure how much of it was panic and how much of it was physical and that's where I got a little bit I got just scared I wasn't sure what was happening anyway I went to the hospital got seen by a nurse got seen by a doctor and doctor said that it was really swollen. If it had been more swollen than what it is, it would have kept me in for observation. But because it was under the, the it wasn't quite that, that swollen, that he, was, he wasn't concerned. He felt that it was an infection, viral or whatever it is, he wasn't sure, but he was going to just send me home, got to take ibuprofen, uh, gargle with this mouthwash stuff and you know, drink lots of water and just sort of keep warm. Um, it's not a very exciting story, I, I admit. But the thing is, I just... There was a relief of knowing that I was okay. Because at the time I really thought it maybe it was my... That was my number up, that was the... That was it. And I know it sounds traumatic after the event, and it sounded silly actually during the event as well, in a sense, but it felt real to me then. And uh, so yeah, I saw the doctor and I apologized. I said, I feel embarrassed for coming into the hospital when there's people, well, actually the hospital was practically empty. There was, there was only one person in the accident emergency ward before me. Uh, which I was very surprised about, but I didn't. I don't like the idea of wasting uh, doctors' time, 
but he said it's the right thing to do. If you can't breathe, you need to seek help. You know, I would have gone to the doctors, just a normal GP surgery, but it wasn't open. So I, you know, it was a case of just going where I could get, get help. So I'm just watching it and everything. But it just made me, I guess that's going to be the topic of today. So this is the hypnotic buffet. I will be closing my eyes a bit because I like to do that when I'm talking. Um, obviously not if I'm driving a car, but uh, just, it's a bit like when I'm listening to something, I like to close my eyes. Uh, I think that sometimes the person at the front of the stage that's maybe, even if it's a small group, I will close my eyes and it's not because I'm bored or I'm tired, it's because I'm listening. I'm really focusing just on that person's voice and what they're saying. So saying that, I need to just let you know, I only ever watch or listen to my stuff when you can safely close your eyes. Even though this isn't um, kind of some kind of a sleep hypnosis session or uh, progressive relaxation you will nevertheless possibly find yourself feeling more relaxed um, just naturally because by focusing on me focusing on my voice maybe if you're watching it on a video focusing on I don't know you might be, whatever you're focusing on in the picture you might be looking at my face, you might be looking at the books behind me, you might be noticing how the length of my beard and my hair is exactly the same length. Maybe you didn't realise that, but it is. Um, I say roughly, I mean I haven't measured each individual hair, but basically I have you know, used the same shave thing to make it all the same length so it's it's my new hobby <laughs> so and I realised that watching me live is it's a bit strange because I think if you're watching a video on YouTube which this will be on YouTube later on after I've done it finished it you can fast forward in the hope of uh, maybe seeing something interesting so at the moment because you can't fast forward unless you're watching it on playback. So I apologise for that. I'm just trying to find a way to do these videos. The picture's quite good. It could be better if I had more light, but generally the picture's okay. The sound for the last three days haven't been very good. I've not been pleased with the, the volume of the sound. So I thought maybe if I got the camera a little bit closer, it's a bit too close for my liking, but nevertheless, it's it's like that far away, which is, what's that, about 20 inches? Or maybe less, I don't know. But yeah, so it's not far away for me. Um, there's probably a way of making the camera go back so it looks further away, but I don't know. So I've been thinking about a few things today has brought up some emotions some ideas and these videos these audios are all about ideas they're about maybe just looking at things in a, a different way maybe from a, a different perspective and I've noticed that Sometimes I can be very closed off to other people's ideas. I've noticed that about myself. Maybe maybe you have the same thing happen sometimes. But I've got a friend who is very different to me as a person. He's had a very different life. And I get on really well with him. But sometimes he says something that I just automatically react as in like, no, I'm just gonna, it's like I've blocked my ears. But actually on reflection, I've realized that, wait a minute, that actually 
is much more open-minded than I am being about that specific subject. I class myself as an open-minded person generally. But there are some things that I'm really close-minded to and I'd like to explore that, not necessarily right now, but like, you know, in my life, in my mind, thinking about these things over time. I'd like to explore more of those things where I'm very limited, maybe limiting myself and my own development maybe as a, as a human, as a person, that could make, you know, help me to be a kinder person, not just to others, but to myself. Which is something that I was talking about yesterday, about kindness to ourselves. And which just reminds me of a, an old cliche that I've heard a few times is, was it, is if you can't, if you can't love yourself, you can't love others, which is a lot of bollocks. I sometimes wonder people when they regurgitate something they've heard before and they really don't even think about what they've said, they've just said it. And And I'll tell you why it's a load of bollocks in a minute. Personally, it's just my, it's an opinion. We've all got opinions. And I've given that a lot of thought. And I don't think there's that. I think the ratio of people that love others compared to the ratio of people that love themselves is not even. And I would bet... I don't have any money in the bank, but if I had money in the bank, I would bet every penny that there are more people that love other people. Family members, children, father, mother, um, friends, and their pets, you know, whoever, compared to those that actually have love for themselves. Love yourself. You know, it's, I think the ratio is a lot, very unbalanced. So the idea that the only people that can love another person is someone that can love themselves is can't be true. However, being able to love yourself is, I would say, possibly one of the most amazing things that you can have because it will transform your life the more kindness you aim at yourself the happier you will be and maybe maybe you will feel more love towards others But it certainly doesn't stop you being able to love another person. I've counselled people in the past who have got huge love for maybe their husband or wife or a partner or whoever it might be, but really have a, a self-hatred, which is um, extreme. Imagine telling that person, saying to them, well, you do realise that if you don't love yourself, you can't ever love another person. Imagine how crushing that would be to somebody who, whose self-esteem was so low towards themselves. To then be told that they're unable to love another person unless they can love themselves. Which is why I said what I said earlier. I'm sure there was a reason why that sentence came about. Maybe it's because to provoke people into looking at themselves and uh, creating those conditions where they can have more love towards themselves. 
I guess anything that does that is a positive thing if that's the outcome. But I think it's important that we perhaps look at the the means, you know, that gets you there. If putting somebody down, saying that they're not going to be able to love another person unless they love themselves, seems really, really harsh. It's like telling me that I can't help other people with anxiety and panic related issues when clearly, as I said at the beginning of the session, this morning I had a severe panic reaction. It was terror, it was absolute terror to not being able to breathe. Does that mean that all the work I've done in the last 12 years online, trying to help people to relieve their stress, to feel you know, uh, kinder towards themselves, to have more relaxation, does that mean that that's, I'm not really eligible to do that anymore? Because, you know, that doesn't seem fair. You know, it's, it's, uh, I can't, does that mean I can't do hypnosis sessions to help people to feel good about their, if you're a woman, I can't do sessions to, to help you to feel better about your body, feel more, um, I don't know, just to increase your self-esteem about your body, regardless of how it is. But maybe I can't do that because I'm a man. It's the same, like, no, it doesn't work like that. For me, it doesn't work like that. Of course, I can't give you female tips on how to be a woman, just like you necessarily can't give me tips on how to be a man. But then I don't feel I can give a man tips on how to be a man because we're all different. We're not just saying that someone's a man or a woman. I don't think that really is a good enough category on them as a person, but yeah. So it got me thinking, it got me thinking about where do I stand as a person, as a, a supposedly like some kind of therapist, some kind of human helper with my life's work, my life's goal to help people in in a way that I can, in a whatever way that is most natural for me. And then something like this morning happens and I, I start questioning myself. I mean I was very emotional, I was on the verge of crying. Just through frustration and through um, guilt, I felt guilty, I felt a fraud, um, and then I started thinking, well, I've had so many messages over the years from people telling me that what I do has helped them, so what's happened with me today, that can't completely, it doesn't delete all that stuff that I might have done or might have helped other people do. So yeah, it got me thinking and I like things that get me thinking. I don't necessarily like things that get me doubting but I like the process of it. And what, what I was thinking about earlier, I was sitting in my big black chair, so I'm banging the microphone stand, or the camera stand. What I was thinking about earlier is, how to prepare for something like this happening again. How to prepare 
um, what it feels like to not have somebody tell me those things that I needed to hear. Although I kind of did have that. The people I spoke to this morning, including a nurse, including a doctor, including my friend that came with me to the hospital, including my friend that lent me the money, they did say things to me. There was a little bit of, um, not a little bit, but it was like every friend, any non-medical person, it seems, will try to um, diagnose. I'm quite, not quite sure why that is. And I'm sure I do the same myself sometimes, but I think it's to part, just to help so you feel relaxed and more calm thinking, well, it's just a cold or it's just flu or it's just laryngitis or it's something like that rather than um, something life threatening. So I did have people saying things which I believe were meant to help me. There was the distraction element, which is what I needed. My friend who came with me to the hospital distracted me. And that's something that I really needed. You know, I really needed that distraction. It was irritating. But then the whole situation was irritating, but I needed the distraction. And I started thinking, well, How do I tell myself and coach myself through a situation like this? How do I, how do you, how do we deal with those things in the moment? And on reflection, I could have just got up, sat down in my chair, reclined and done some self-hypnosis. I could have focused on my throat. I could have relaxed my body, relaxed my mind. And that might have been all I needed to do. But that part of me that even thought about that wasn't activated, it wasn't working that part of my brain that would think do this and then do that you know like in a methodical way wasn't activating I was in I know it's an old term but fight or flight uh, I think it's the first thing anybody that studies uh, stress and anxiety we hear about the fight and flight mode and definitely wasn't in fight mode. I've never ever felt in fight mode during anxiety. Ever. Well to be fair you don't get anxiety if you're in fight mode I don't think. it's uh, Fight mode takes you in a different direction. Flight. Running away from it. Well I didn't run away from it. I ran for help. I didn't run away from the problem. So yeah, it just got me thinking about that. And I wonder for you, what what do you do in those situations when you need to hear something that's useful, that's helpful, that's calming? Because I sometimes feel that I need me kind of might sound weird, but I kind of would like the idea of having someone like me to listen to every day, even if it's just for a short while. Maybe not even every day, but just someone that could maybe help calm me down, get me uh, grounded, maybe experiment with ideas. Because this is what these sessions are about. It's about It's in the title, The Buffet, A Hypnotic Buffet. And I know I shouldn't really be explaining what they're about in every session. Um, but I'm going to anyway today. It's, it's a buffet. It's ideas that you can think about and 
like if you was in a clothes shop you can try on some clothes try on a jacket um, or a pair of shoes or a hat see if it what it looks like in the mirror how it feels on your head that's the hat not the shoes so that's what I kind of aimed at these being around being about but it's just as much that for me as it is for you because I don't necessarily know what I'm going to talk about or discuss or suggest during this session beforehand. I had an idea that I was going to talk about what happened today because as well as talking about some ideas and suggestions and thoughts that may be useful to try on, some things will stick some things may not be useful at all but some things will stick and help and to transform the way you live the way you enjoy your life and it's all positive I'm not saying that every single thing I say is going to be um, talking about happy things all the time and I'll talk about real things. I'll talk about maybe stuff that's going on in my life or something I might have read in the paper or seen on the news. For me, that's not negative. That's just real. My hope is to not be negative within myself when I'm on here, is to talk about real things and to just express what's going on in my mind, how I'm feeling in a real way way and also part of that is to maybe calm calm you down a bit maybe just to relax you and I realize maybe talking about panic attacks isn't necessarily the most relaxing subject but it is also what has happened today with me and I'm just going to get a drink. I've got some coffee. It's not the best thing for a throat. I've been drinking water most of the day. Look what seems darker on the screen now since I went like that. Anyway, hello to anyone that's watching. Uh, I've got a YouTube channel on again, but I didn't didn't upload all of my videos like uh, I've always done in the past whenever I've lost a channel or for whatever happened I've just uploaded the the most popular ones that I've had out of the 700 there's like it was about 100 that were popular that were really really popular so I've uploaded those a few weeks back and now I'm just uploading the new stuff that I do so all the old stuff, all the old videos and MP3s are available on my website. And you can also watch, listen to them on iTunes and SoundCloud. And Vimeo as well. All my videos are on Vimeo, including this one will be as well. So there's a few things. Gratitude. I realised that Just how grateful I felt towards my friend who came with me to the hospital. There's a real, real sense in me of um, kindness towards that person, and I realise it. You know, it's kind of well, I'm being kind, I'm feeling kind towards them because they were kind to me. It doesn't feel like that. It feels it's a natural kindness. It's not something I'm thinking. I should feel this way because they were this way with me. It's just a natural arising of gratitude. Not because I feel I should be grateful, but because I am. I like that. I like the natural responses, the, the natural arising of feelings, which is why I'm not known for being complimentary to people in a false way. I don't... I don't go around telling people, oh, you've got lovely hair and you've got, oh, that's a lovely suit. And Unless I'm thinking it or feeling it, I don't say it. And that can be frustrating sometimes as 
and it might sound a weird thing to say considering when I'm doing these sessions I am in that mode but that's how I feel when I'm doing this this is what I'm doing this is why I'm doing it and when I say what I say I mean what I say when I tell you that you there's a kindness within you that you might not even be aware of the depth and the strength of that kindness I mean that genuinely I believe that's for everyone I think we've all got that and I was reminded of that today in fact I was talking to my friend about another person just briefly but just uh, a problematic person and he said well you know we've all got kindness in us and I was like yeah I believe that why why did I suspend that belief just for this person that's what I do believe I genuinely believe that that everybody has got kindness in them. They may not express it, they may, may not even realize it is there. But we've all, we've all got that, I really believe that. We've all got the ability to put other people first and I believe that even some of the most maybe violent, vicious, sadistic people will stop if they're walking down a the road they will stop if they see an elderly person having fallen over because that's the natural part of their brain that's the natural kindness arising and they're not going to do it because of any other reason other than it's the right thing to do Morally, it's not something you need to be taught. I don't believe when anyone needs to be taught to care for somebody in need, in trouble. I've got an itchy ear, sorry. And it's still itchy. I think it might be connected to my throat because it's ears, throat, nose, mouth, and all that stuff. It's all connected, isn't it? Um, So I like that idea. Not just that everybody has kindness within them. Because that can transform how you perceive another person. But also that we all have that kindness within ourselves. More kindness than we're perhaps ever going to realise. And maybe you can focus more on that become more aware of your own endless lake of kindness which I do believe is the title of one of my videos or I think it was called the lake of kindness so but on the other side if you think about it if you work with somebody and I've discovered this a few times. I've been around a long time now. I've been working for, well, I've been of working age, because I'm not working at the moment, but I've been of working age for, it'll be 33 years this year, in April. Or 32 years. It was 1986 that I started working full time. So yeah, it'll be 32 years in a couple of months. And there's been people that I really didn't like, that I worked with and I didn't get on with. And I, didn't, I couldn't see any niceness in them. Maybe they were my boss, maybe a work colleague. But sometimes I, I worked with people and they really didn't show any kind of niceness or kindness. But then I might see them on a day off, maybe with their children, or maybe with their parents walking um, in the town. So Andy Chikorina just said hi, hi, hi Andy, Boston. Uh, 
And I saw them being caring with maybe their elderly parent or grandparent or with their children. And I got to see a different side to them. Sometimes I even got to have an interaction with them outside of work and they were very different. And it surprised me. And I remember once I had a real, I was 18 at the time, I had a job in a factory and one of the supervisors was on my case the whole time. He was really quiet because um, I used to be chatty, I used to chat back and I used to be argumentative and I didn't take, wouldn't let anyone bully me. And it seemed like he was trying to bully me but because I wouldn't allow it. And the internet just cut off then. But it's back again, hopefully. I hope it hasn't broken it into two things. So, as I say, I met this person outside a garage. And I was no longer working where he worked. But we never got on. And I really thought that we were going to end up having a fight. A physical fight. Because that's, I thought he would, might attack me or something. It turned out we ended up chatting really friendly and we ended up being really good friends and it's happened a few times over the years so there's always more to people than I think you get to see or get to experience and I quite like that I like the idea that with the internet Especially with vlogs, people making blogs and vlogging and things like this. I guess this is kind of a vloggy thing. By the way, Andy Chikorina, who's watching or said hello, she was uh, she got me into vlogging on YouTube, like a regular vlogging. Uh, I used to do a vlog called Jason Chats, but I don't do it anymore. But this. Um, I like the idea of being able to people being able to just open up, talk about their lives, talk about their emotions, express themselves. Some people do take take it to extremes and use it as a an anger releasing platform, um, and that can be entertaining at times. I, I generally don't really want to use it like that. And I, again, this isn't a vlog. This is just. This is a, a very different thing from anything that anyone that I know of is doing. It's a different thing. It's a mixture of things. Because hypnosis is more than closing your eyes and having somebody tell you what to focus on. Just give a got a bit of gas there. It's more than that. It is focus, it's a focus of attention, which is what you're doing right now. You're focusing on my voice. You're focusing on the words I say. And some of those words and sentences and ideas that although you may be half focusing on them, will still be listened to by your unconscious mind. And then those things that may be of use to you can be absorbed. And also repetition can be useful because every session there's going to be a degree of repetition just found a little bit of biscuit between my tooth mm. it's a nice little snack mm. so yeah there's repetition hopefully not too much of the boring repetition but nevertheless it can be a way of cementing those ideas a way of sticking them a little bit more inside your mind the idea is that everybody has kindness within them even those who you would think maybe it's maybe hard to believe that there's any kindness there because you haven't experienced that from them and if that's the case then clearly you must have kindness within you and the idea that actually that kindness within you 
is way deeper, way bigger, way more powerful than you will ever know. I find quite exciting actually. On a personal level, the idea that maybe, maybe deep inside me I am, I've got something special in there, something a real, um, a deep kindness that is, that will override uh, anger and maybe hostile thoughts that I might have or jealousy, regret, that's a huge thing that I've been dealing with lately. A lot of regret. So I can't come on here and preach to people, and I won't, about anything. All I can do is just talk about some stuff, offer my perspective, maybe offer perspectives of other people that I've spoken to or read. And maybe I can learn from that experience, from this experience. And I think when it comes to, if you listen to something, you watch TV, you read a book, you go to a new place, you have a conversation with somebody, it creates new neural networks, pathways in your brain. And I suppose in a way, it's like if you make a little path for yourself for the first time somewhere and you haven't got a map, you haven't got a bit of string to you know find your way back, you haven't made any markings and you've only made a very small pathway, then the pathway is still going to be there but maybe if you don't visit it again for a long time and if you think about it like a, a forest that pathway will become overgrown again. But if you keep revisiting that path, it gets to a point, as you, I'm sure anyone of you that's been in the countryside, there are paths in the countryside that nothing grows on. There's no growth because the path is used, has been used for maybe centuries even, you know, many, many years. And it's easy access. So with these sessions, we're making new pathways. We're doing that whatever we do anyway. Whether you were watch, watching this or if you're watching Family Guy on telly or reading a book about the Smurfs. I mean, if that's something you would do. It's, it's either creating new pathways or revisiting old ones. Then it's a case of thinking, well, what old ones do you want to revisit? Because you could look at it a different way, a reversed way of maybe there's a path that you don't want to really be going down anymore. Maybe there's some pathways in your mind that you would like to be overgrown. So that maybe you don't visit it for a while and then when you go to visit it, the idea of having to clear a pathway through with a machete or with a lawnmower or whatever, or maybe there's sting in there, and you know you're gonna get stung on the ankle, and you think, ah, oh, I can't be bothered with that, it's not worth the effort. Which means that's a place maybe of negativity, maybe somewhere that, maybe a negative thought, maybe a harmful to your own peace of mind, and perhaps not visiting that lets it get overgrown and eventually you can't even see it anymore you don't think about it anymore it's no longer a place that you go and all the new pathways the ones which go to nice places for example if you've got a pathway that goes to memories of an unhappy experience and then you've got pathways that are going to go to a new pathway that goes to 
let's say the idea of actually recognition and sitting with that feeling knowing that you have got an infinite amount of kindness within you and you can enjoy having that feeling enjoy thinking about it and included in that can be memories of kind deeds that you have done to help other people and to help yourself creating that new pathway and making that pathway nice and clear and having the other pathway which used to lead to an old memory which when you visited that it was a crappy feeling it wasn't a nice feeling and there was nothing to be gained from it so you're choosing a different pathway and the pathway the new pathway now gets clearer and clearer to the point where not only is there nothing growing in that pathway, but also you can see, I think of it like a house, like a little bungalow or like a little shed or conservatory or something, and like a summer house. You can visit that summer house and go there and just feel relaxed and calm. And you can have whatever you want in that summer house, whatever wonderful feelings memories from the past that were happy, pleasant, healing, any thoughts for the future, plans for the future that's going to lead you in a direction of more happiness for yourself, your loved ones. So the other pathway gets all clogged up, the one over there gets all clogged up and you can't even see that little bungalow thing anymore because it's all overgrown you don't even notice it I noticed the other day I was walking I talked about this yesterday I went down a different road it's not a very exciting story by the way um, there's no car chases or balloon rides or anything like that no one even eats chips or burgers there's nothing interesting but I'll tell you anyway I went left towards a town that I'd never gone, never walked towards before. I walked up there and really windy day. It was cold. It could had something to do with my throat, why I didn't feel very well this morning. But anyway, I walked up there and I was walking past places and it just looked like there was just rows of hedges and trees. There was no life, there was nothing there. But actually, on the way back, I noticed that there was this big bit of land that was hidden. Couldn't see it, but I'd stopped. I think I tripped over something on the pavement. So there's cats outside screaming. And I just noticed this massive bit of land hidden. And then I noticed there was houses that were also hidden behind these trees and bushes. So this is like, if you can't see something, you don't know it's there, or you forget it's there. And maybe it's a little bit like if you lose contact with friends and family, and you forget maybe that they're there, when actually they are there. There's some people in your life that will always be there for you and maybe you don't even realise it. And maybe they don't realise that you're always going to be there for them. Because it's not necessarily something that we may talk about. Maybe you do, I know I don't. Generally. Perhaps I could a bit more often. So I'm going to bring this to an end. So I said, this is a bit of an unusual thing that I'm doing here. A bit of an unusual video, MP3 sessions. I'm planning to do one of these every single day of this year, 2018. And at the end of the year, I'm going to listen to all the sessions and I'm going to take out bits from each day which 
I find and maybe useful. And I'm going to release a book. I'm going to write a book. It's going to be basically a diary of 2018. So hypnotic buffet 2018. And each day will be like a summary maybe of that day. And I'm going to do that and release that maybe in January 2019. So I'll, be, I'll start doing it during the year as well for old sessions. So that's the plan. So I realise this isn't going to be for everyone. But this is something that I was going to do 20 years ago. Something that I wanted to do. Bearing in mind the internet was basically a toddler back in them days. And the resources, the applications were not available back then to do this. I always wanted to do something where it wasn't structured necessarily in a sense of I'm now going to do a session on um, I don't know, sleep apnea or earache or I'm going to do a session on bereavement or I'm going to do a session on stop smoking or um, anger or you know whatever. Basically what these sessions are about is a cumulative so that whether it's depression, if you, you have issues with depression, anger, if you have issues with self-esteem issues, whether there's problems with relationships, whatever's going on in your life, these sessions, day after day, will help to change your thinking. in a new direction, open up new possibilities, create new neural pathways in your brain. That's what this is about. So I thank you for those of you that have watched, those that you watched live, that is those of you that will watch once it's you know uploaded and posted on Facebook, and those that you will watch when it's on YouTube, Vimeo and those that you listen to this on, um, was it Facebook, not Facebook, iTunes and SoundCloud and also my website jasonnewland.com. So I'm bringing this to an end. Thank you everyone. I'm going to give you some homework for today. I love the, the word homework just shuts my brain down. It's like, oh, not homework. Very simple thing. I should like you to, when this is finished, I want you to close your eyes and think of somebody 